are you? Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. occasion to dread. I'm not going. Oh, yeah? What, are you going to plan to have chicken pox that day? That's what you said last year. A person can only have chicken pox once in their life, and trust me, you have had it. How long are you going to keep making things up? Until Dad apologizes, until his funeral. That I'll go to. Look, I'm, I'm really swamped, and I'll talk to you later, okay? Wait a Bye! Hey, hey, Kate, wait! I just got off the phone with Francesca. Oh, Daddy's party? I don't get it. Is this supposed to be an annual event now? Well, Franny wants to. You know, since Mom died. Anyway, it's a chance to see everybody. Who? All the old paisans stuffing themselves on manicotti and talking about baseball games they saw in 1948. We'll be there. Oh, sorry. I know, I just, you know how it is. Look, just make an appearance. Then you and Philip can have some function you have to go to. Anyway, here are the things I told you about. Um, I know they're not what you usually carry, but... Well, you never know. Great. <laughs> okay. I won't keep you. Oh, Cynthia's coming down for the party, Okay, too. okay, say no more. Hi. Yeah. We're just looking. You got any fatigues or combat boots? No, nothing like that. I sell vintage clothes. Second time around. Hi, it's me. Hi. Uh, please, be careful with that. It's really fragile. It's Philip. I know, I just... I have, uh, customers. Oh, great. Sorry. Sorry to bother you. Uh, tonight, don't don't bother to cook, okay? I'll pick something up on the way. I'll be there around 7. Okay. All right. Well, I'll see you then. Bye. Bye. That's an original. It's nice, isn't it? It'd be a cool vest. Just cut off the sleeves. Yeah. You can't. I mean, because it goes with the skirt, and it's not for sale as a separate. Let's go.
How about that cabin in the mountain where she's planning to throw you off a cliff? Perhaps the cabin in the mountains. You know it's beautiful there this time of year. Leave on Friday? How could we possibly do that? Just get on a plane and go. Just to avoid a party? People do it all the time. Go to Paris for the weekend. <laughs> Come on, wouldn't it be great? Just take off, get away from all of them. No arguments, no bickering. Yeah. Come on, you don't like my family anyway. I, do, I like your family, I do like them. They're noisy when they eat, but I like them. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> We could go someplace quiet, someplace nice, just the two of us. Um, when is it again, the party? Do we really have to go? Yes, we have to go, it's your family. When is it again? Saturday. Come on. Just humor me, just tell me you're gonna take me away someday, somewhere. You don't have to mean it, just say it. Just say it. Never mind. Here and there, you know. Come on, you don't find this kind of quality at garage sales. No, you don't. Come on. <laughs> oh, all right, I'll tell you. Seeing as I've sold you my shop, I might as well give you my last little secret, yes? You ready? <laughs> there you are. Funerals. Huh? Yep. The obituary. The obituary. Got it in one. And you know, the family's usually very glad to have somebody around to help out, you know, to dispose of things. And of course, I split the proceeds with them if they sell. Wicked, eh? No, it's a service, really. Yeah, it is a service to them and to you. Well, the if they sell part isn't so perfect. No, it's the fun, Kate. Come on, let's face it, it's the fun. You're sitting here with a bundle of old clothes and you're rummaging through them and you're, what do you find? A genuine Javanshi. I mean, that's wonderful. I mean, look at, look at this green dress. Isn't that just wonderful for your mother? The only one in the world who could wear every colour of green because of her hair. Listen to that. <laughs> oh, Cynthia will love it. Oh, Cynthia, I'll take yes. it for her. Yes. I'd love to come with you sometime. Well, you can. You can come with me any time you like. Oh, God, Willie! Pierce! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. He's gonna lose one of those cufflinks. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Oh, Tell me I'm right. Cynthia never tells me anything about the plot. Imagine having him for a brother-in-law. Well, he's not yet. Yeah, but you know him. Oh, yeah. So? Well... What you see is what you get. What I see, I'd be thrilled to get. But, Sir Nami, you said Saturn in my eighth house did not mean Simon and I would actually break up. All right, listen, listen, my sister's here. I'll call you later. Okay, bye. Hey, sweet. Hi. Hi. Mm. What's this about Simon? Are you breaking uh, up? We had a huge fight. He thinks he's Pierce Covington. Talks with an English accent. Calls me Olivia. He says he can't commit. After I've given him two years of my life. So I told him I should be committed for dating him. 
and I walked out. Well, that's actors for you. Right, like you'd know from actors. How's Mr. Phil? Philip? He's fine. Are you here for Daddy's party already? I'm here to nurse my wounds. Aww. Dating a soap opera star is bad enough. Dating a soap opera character is ludicrous. So, what about Philip? Is anything happening there? I'm quite content, thank you. Quite content. Sounds madly exciting. Mm. Snore. Oh, 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 oh. It's not for you. Remember mom's dying words? Green. Green. Not, not good, good on you. you. I wanted to fix the sequence before you saw oh, it. Oh, you sweetie, can I try it on? I'm sure you want it shorter. Those steps. Don't you have anything new? Uh, no. I sell secondhand and consignment. Just like the sign says. What do you think? Oh, pretty. Mm, very foxy. Very, very nice. Well, I hate secondhand. I've got a thing about it. Y you know, someone else's clothes. Really? Maybe you should see a doctor about that. Oh, cute. Real cute. Why did you treat her like that? Like what? As if she smelled. She wasn't gonna buy. She wanted new stuff. Couldn't you have said my stuff's not new, but it's the finest in designer wear? You could have shown her something that was more her style, or at least her size. She didn't appreciate my stuff. Wake up, Kate. What are you running here, a museum or a store? I can't force people to buy. They have to want my stuff. You can encourage them. I mean, look at this place. It's drab. I I'm sorry, but it is. It should be romantic and fun. Slap some paint on the walls. Brighten it up. Oh, here. Nicer bags would help. And doors on the dressing rooms. These curtains are ghastly. And full-length mirrors inside. Cynthia, stop. I know your projects. In a minute, you'll be telling me I need ferns and cupids. No ferns, but cupids might work. I don't have any money. Katie, you don't need money. You have me. You know I can't do that. Sweetie, you have to do something or else she'll be back working at the Pentagon. Let's just make a list. A list doesn't cost anything. Yeah, I know you Pentagon. Hello. Hi, Kate, it's me. Hi, where are you? I'm sorry, listen, I can't make it. I have an emergency meeting with Grant Winthrop in New York. New York? Yes, I'm at the airport now. Ah. I'm sorry. So explain to your father for me, okay? Philip, you're sending me into battle alone. I know, I'm sorry. I have to do this, Kate. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. So the big businesswoman arrives an hour late, huh? Happy birthday, Dad. Swamped with customers, is that right? Not exactly. <laughs> Here. It's from Philip, too. Oh, thanks. He had an emergency at work. Couldn't make it. You ought to marry that guy. I don't know why you're dragging your feet. Anyway, I think there's some food left. Go get some. Hi. 
Hi, Kate. Sweet. Nice dress. Thank you. <laughs> Daddy loves your cannoli, Signora Caretti. Molto grazie. Oh, good, Kate, you made Hi. it. Hi. Hey, where's Philip? Um, had an emergency at work. I will. We love you, Mad. I telephoned the order in. They made a mistake. Oh. <laughs> hey, how's my favorite sister-in-law? Thought I was your sure. favorite. You are. Ah, oh, well, you're all my favorite. Oh well, why don't we just change the M to a D? You can stick an L Y on the end. We love you madly. I think it's perfect the way it is. He's always mad about something. Annette, could you put the cannoli in the fridge? Sure. Kate, maybe you could get out of the room. I can do that. <gasps> okay, Mr. Attorney. What's black and brown and looks good on lawyers? Doberman. All right, what's a lawyer's creed? <laughs> I don't know. You're innocent until proven broke. Oh. <laughs> All right, what's the difference? between a lawyer and a catfish. What is it? Well, one's a bottom-feeding scavenger, the other's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're back already? I thought you went upstairs to iron your blouse. <laughs> oh, Daddy, if you knew anything about fashion, you'd know her outfit is very chic. Well, she looks like she slept in it. What's chic about that? <laughs> I'm sure you think that shirt is the height of fashion. <laughs> hey, you know, I don't claim to be an expert. And I don't try to make a living selling other people's cast-offs. Is that blouse an example of your merchandise? <laughs> no wonder. No wonder what? No wonder you have to come home to get a decent meal. Look at you. You're thin, you're pale. Uh, but I guess that's chic, too, isn't it? Daddy, you're impossible. Here. Kate. Oh, Father Francis. How are you? looking very beautiful today. Thank you. I'm just thinking it's a shame your blessed mother isn't here. And then there you are, looking like her twin. I'm sure she's happy where she is. <sighs> It's a grand occasion, though, you have to admit. Grand. Oh. <laughs> Just what I've always wanted. <laughs> Get along with that, huh? Need any help? No, thanks. Oh, hi. Hi. Can I get you something? I'll get it. So, you're Kate. That's right. You're Cynthia's... Attorney. One of them. Harry Dietrich. Oh, I think your blouse is great. Thank you. It's turn of the century, isn't it? Yeah. How do you know that? I think that was my grandmother's. Oh, so she you wanted it back? Too late. Oh, right. <laughs> you know what I wanted you two to meet? Harry just moved here from New York. Excuse me. I'll just grab Three some out of the yeah, I'll put it in. I'll, I'll wash these up. Yeah, I got them. Next play. I feel so close to you. <laughs> Francesca's the oldest, right? I met her when I arrived. She seems very determined. Oh, yes. She's an internist, you know. Very successful, but it took determination more than the usual. Oh? Well, first she got a scholarship to Johns Hopkins at 17. Then got pregnant, got packed off to a home for unwed mothers. But after the baby was born, she and Jerry refused to give her up and got married. And then she became a doctor? Are you sure this isn't too boring? No. Uh, Dad said no sense wasting a good mind and bullied her into taking the scholarship anyway. And Annette, the blonde. Great mother, great wife. That's her banker husband, Paul, on the gazebo. The matching girls are theirs. Check out the clothes. The whole family's color coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> when we were kids, Franny and Annette were dad's favorites until Cynthia hit puberty and turned into... Cynthia? So there's Francesca, the doctor, Annette, the perfect wife, Cynthia, the supermodel, and Caitlin, the rag seller. Not exactly my father's darling child. Well, I think you're something. 
And very beautiful, too. Oh. Caitlin, thanks for the glove. Oh, Harry, right? The bottom-feeding scavenger. That would be me. <laughs> My dad. Good. You want to get out of here? Yeah. With a bottom feeder? Yeah. All right. I know you're seeing someone, but uh, I'd like to call you anyway. That's not a good idea. I'm gonna call you. You don't have to call back. I should go. You have the number. I'll be back in my room about seven. Call me, please. I love you. Bye. He's completely smitten. I could tell. Stop playing Cupid, okay? I don't need it. You need some passion in your life. You think you're in love with Philip, but he's just a habit. Maybe it's time for a change. Speaking of someone who just broke up with her own habit, you're not exactly speaking from a position of strength. Hmm. Maybe they're from St. Anthony's when it burned down. We'll clean them up, strip them, put a door frame around them. You mean you like them? They're beautiful. Huh? Huh? <laughs> anyway, you're hardly the first woman to dump a guy because she fell for someone else. I'm not dumping anyone, and I haven't fallen for anyone. I'm gonna marry Philip. Really? Where's the ring? Or did I miss something? Let's go see Mom. Kevin's a big cocktail party. She's the center of attention in her red suit. A dry martini. Probably her third. That's always bugged me. His name there. It should just read beloved wife and mother. Well, he was her husband and he loved her. sure to find Arcady under the bed whenever they yelled. When he yelled, you mean? Come on. He, he never let up on her. She spent half my childhood in the gazebo crying. And getting pie-eyed. That's where she stashed her bottles. Yeah, well, it was his fault she drank anyway. Come on, Kate, she was an alcoholic. 
You've never said a bad word about Dad. No, I haven't. And I hate it that you do. I wish I could find a man half as good. It wasn't that hard for me. This potato salad is delicious. Unusual. Place in the village makes it fresh. Would you like some more? Thank you. You know, I was thinking about Kate just last week. Why was that, Mother? I saw Sarah DeVille at the Whitmans. You remember her, don't you? She's married to Paul DeVille, cousin of Peter, the one who raises horses. Oh, yes. Why were you thinking about Kate, dear? Sarah had a connection with Valentino. She can't be that old. Isn't she our age? Uh, I think Mrs. Trainer means um, the couture designer, not the actor. Uh, of course, the designer. Lawrence, what are you talking about? Anyway, Sarah has closets filled with Valentinos that are terribly out of date, so of course, I thought of Kate. That's, that's very kind. I'd love some Valentinos if she'd like to sell them. So Kate, your little shop is doing well, is it? Getting a lot of donations? Consignments, actually, but, um, yeah. Philip. Uh-huh? I want to ask you something. Fire away. What are you doing with me? What? What? Doing? What do you see in me? I can't categorize it. Try. <sighs> All right, okay. Um, you're nice to me. Excuse me. Go on. Uh, you make me feel good. You're not demanding. Demanding. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't <laughs> badger me to go places and do things I don't want to go or do. Philip, these are things that describe how I act towards you. What is it about me that you like? My own qualities. I really don't see where this is going. I like everything. <sighs> You're perfect. Don't change. Okay? Please get in the car. Remodel Incorporated, let us remodel you. Harry! Yes, she's here. Isn't she? What did I tell you? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Ah. Uh, remodeling, yeah. Cynthia talked me into it. Now? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye. 
What did he say? Nothing. Nothing? We're having coffee? Listen, Harry is charming, handsome, and smart. It's okay to like him. It's just coffee. What do you call this color, anyway? Ghost view. You expect me to choose a color from nail polish? Why not? They're great colors. Oh. I think it'll look amazing. Well, that wasn't enough for Gus. So he befriended the widow who lived one floor below us. In the same building? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> but she had two sons, ex-Marines both, <laughs> who did not approve of Gus. So he put on an overcoat, a hat, a scarf, a fake mustache. This was in the middle of the summer. He'd go down the fire escape to call on the widow. <laughs> And my mom eventually took him back, forgave him. And after she died, he went out to California to do the racetrack circuit where he died of a coronary. But it sounds like you liked him. Oh, yeah. What a character. Sure I can't get you something? It's getting on lunch. Oh. No, I have to go. Oh. There's a Hitchcock festival this week at the Uptown. Oh, really? They always look so much better on the big screen, especially the black and white ones. You don't get that contrast on TV. Goes out of yes. How about a ride? Uh, no thanks. I'll walk. Well, I'll check the movie times. I'll give you a call. Whatever. Have you got time to come to another house with me? Um, I feel like I should get back to the shop and keep an eye on Cynthia. Okay. I'm so glad you're doing it up. Yeah, I needed that. I miss it. The shop? Yeah, more than I thought I would. Don't that kind of, you know, the chatting, the talking to yeah. people. That's what I really, really miss. Well, you can come back anytime you want, you know? Yeah. Look, honestly, look at these weeds. Would you think somebody gave them a whack? Oh, look what we got here. What? He's seen better days. A little Cupid. Ah, look. Yeah. Funny, Cynthia and I were just talking about Cupid's for the shop. There, there, look. See, he's smiling. Do you want him? Well, he's cute, isn't he? Well, he's a saucy little chap. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's ask him what they want for it. OK. <sighs> Is it heavy? Yes. Actually, I could help you with the books. Yes. Feel like Chinese? You said a movie. We did the movie. You never said a movie and dinner. Takeout is hardly dinner. We wouldn't have to go out. We could eat on your balcony. Wait. How did you know I have a balcony? All the apartments in your building have a balcony, don't they? Oh, right. <laughs> ah, this is great. I'm sorry, do you want a plate? No, I thought we could eat family style if that's all right with you. Oh, sure. That's great. Mmm. Fried rice. Okay. Good. Want some? Try it. Okay, you want to try mine? Oh. Mmm. It's one of my favorites. Can I get you some longer chopsticks? <laughs> over my food like 
Every time I'm afraid somebody's gonna take it, I call it the immigrant hunch. My whole family does it. I like that immigrant hunch. Hmm? Uh-uh. So I took the money my mother gave me and I quit my job and I opened a shop. And I'm glad I did. Except sometimes when I look at my bank statements. Ah, doing work you enjoy is worth everything. So you love what you do? I do. It's mostly small time stuff, but my clients have real problems. And sometimes I can help them. You were washing dishes the first time we met. And you pulled your hand out of the sink, still wet and soapy, <laughs> and shook my hand anyway. I liked that. Yeah, you did. You didn't hesitate. I've been doing some thinking, <clears throat> and do you remember the other day when you asked me what I saw in you? Well, I think I know what you were asking, and the thing is that we seem to get along so well most of the time, that almost all the time, that uh, we've never had to talk about it. I mean, we make a great team, don't you think? Yeah. I'm not sure team is the yeah, well, right word. But you know what I mean, right? I don't want to lose you. I want you to stick around. Permanently. <sighs> Are you sure? Yes, yes. Because you're comfortable with me? Katie, you are a very kind person. You remind me why it matters. So, should we set a date? I hope you're not doing this because you were afraid I would leave you. No. No, I'm doing it because it's a... makes sense. It's the next logical step. Wonderful. That is wonderful. <sighs> Hi. You know, I've been thinking. It's not enough to just to do a facelift here. You need a whole new approach to selling. A snazzy new logo, lots of publicity. Are you sure about this color? me. What is that? Where did you oh, get it? A friend. Is it too much? No, I love it. Maybe over there by the dressing rooms? Might work. Yeah. Maybe it has already. Have you fallen for Harry? You have, haven't you? I knew it. I knew it. I am so clever. Well, I like him. Like? Like? Is that all? He's so different from Philip. Yeah, Harry's alive. All right. If you must know, 
Philip and I. Just goes to show you that you should always listen to your sister. Excellent advice. Hey. 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 Really made progress. Here, this is yours, isn't it? Yeah. Where'd you get it? Daddy found it after the party. Figured it'd be another year before he got over there, so, uh... Thank you. Oh, Franny, my friend, lawyer, Harry, he needs some sort of physical for an insurance thing. Is that something you could do? Sure, have him call my office. I'll have someone set him up. No, oh, I think the clasp is broken. Kate? What? Is that a ring? Oh. Give me your hand. Oh. Cynthia? Uh. <laughs> Cynthia? You might want to take a look at this. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Welcome, Philip, to the family. Well, Cheers. Well, now, you'll be giving Caitlin her first real job, and she'll be a good wife oh, to wait. you. Excuse me, what do you mean, first real job? OK, you've, you've had 17 jobs since you left college. Don't think I haven't been counting. But this one is a keeper, right, Phil? <laughs> I certainly hope so, sir. And when my new grandchildren start showing up, then she'll really know what a job is. I already have a real job. And in the unlikely event that we have children... What do you, what do you mean, in the unlikely event you have children? Is there something the matter with him? No, there's nothing wrong with either of us, just we haven't decided whether or not we want to have children. Francesca, is there something wrong with your face? Because if there isn't, will you stop squinting at your sister like a 12-year-old kid? If you have something to say, say it. Okay. I don't think this is the time to discuss this. Oh, you don't think? Well, this is still my house, and as long as you're in it, you can stop trying to run other people's lives. Now, Franny, you can't do that because, see, that's Daddy's job. Philip, I'd like to leave. Oh, Kate, stop fussing. Sit down. I don't want to sit down. I want to leave. Then leave. Kate, let's just leave. <clears throat> well, thank you for your hospitality. So long, Good night. Good night. So, marriage, eh? How do you feel? I feel that maybe I should be happier. I can understand that. Can you? Absolutely. Before my marriage, Mr. Headley said to me that everything would be one big, long party. Monte Carlo, south of France. Poor fool. Mm, that sounds like a nice party. Yes, but you see, it wasn't. I mean, all those wasted hours. I'd much prefer to have been out here, you know? I have an absolute dread of parties now. This is, this is where you should be with your plants, your flowers, your fertilizer. I've grown to love this dirt, you know? It nourishes things, it grows things, it protects things. I love it. So you regretted your marriage? Oh, I wouldn't go that far, no. But I would say this, Kate, I would say that my husband was as dull as ditch water. And without your mother's help, I would never have made it through the things that we called our little trials. My father was more than a trial. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for him. She might still be here. Oh, come on, Kate. You know your mother had a brain tumor. And before she died, she said her tumor was, was full of fury and the raging indignation of the oppressed. must have been reading too much Irish poetry, if you ask me. <laughs> Would you do me a favor and get that colander, please? Huh? Did you get that colander? Oh, yeah. Trainer, the colander. Thank you. Is that just something between you and your father? Or do you really not want to have children? No, I don't think I do. 
Why not? Well, there are natural mothers and there are natural aunts, and I think I'm a natural aunt. Well, you could you could at least consider it. I have considered it. Just the way I see it, once a woman has children, nothing interesting ever happens to her again. I didn't know you wanted children. You never told me that. Well, there was no reason to, was there? When you're done with that basil, you could start on the cilantro. Except don't chop it up like you did last time. Just let the leaves remain whole. What's the difference? It's all gonna get mushed up together anyway. It's mother's recipe. It'll be better this way, you'll see. You would think I wasn't coming. Ah, oh, I wouldn't think that. So, uh, well, how's the renovation? Uh, it's good. It's really changing. Cynthia has great ideas, some hmm. great ideas. Oh, but listen, I, I have a problem. What is it? It's you. I'm sorry. I won't be a problem anymore. I, right, but thank you for calling. Because I appreciate being able to do this in person. I, uh... I've fallen in love with you. That's my problem. But I don't want to be a problem for you. But you are. Because I've fallen in love with you, too. Now, is that going to be a problem? Oh, that's a problem I can live with. And the last and perhaps the most serious obstacle to meaningful fiscal reform is the continued efforts of the lobbyists. In conclusion... This just isn't going to work. He's just trying to impress the bankers. And I just can't sit here as a Relax. Relax. through here. Thank you very much. Relax. Philip, I'm leaving. Sweetheart, ten minutes, we're gonna have some coffee, and then we'll be out. Relax. This just isn't gonna work. Fiscal reform? No, us. I'm sorry. is nowhere in sight, and you and Harry are awfully cozy. What are you not telling me? Nothing. Oh. So, the new mirrors got here yesterday. Why are you looking at me like that? So it looks like we'll be ready for the reopening next week. Great. I'll come back. Come back? Where are you going? Simon called last night, begging me to come back to New York. Oh, no. I miss him. So we're going to therapy. <laughs> me and Simon and Pierce Covington. Thank goodness, because if I stay at Daddy's much longer, I'll be braiding my hair and going to the orthodontist. Where's Daddy? Mm. He said he'd be late, something about the plumbing next door. I think he's got something going with the widow Carrington. 
I love it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> hey, hey, when's my birthday, girl? Hey. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hey, Tom. Hi, 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 hi. Now, this is that uh, rice cooker thing that you've always wanted. I got a good deal on it. Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> I hope I didn't miss the meal. Daddy, you remember Harry? Oh, yeah. Hi, hi, Harry. Dominic, how are you? Fine, fine, thanks. This may be a little sudden, but while we're all assembled here, I, uh... I've asked your youngest daughter, Kate, to marry me. And she said yes. Yes! yes. Wait a minute, didn't you, didn't you just get engaged? Wow. <laughs> you are so devious. We need more champagne. Right. Well, Congratulations. Well, well. My, my, my. Well, Philip moved out and Harry moved right in, huh? I move fast. Yes, yes. <laughs> sit down, sit down, Harry. Make, make yourself at home. Well, 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 well. Here. No, I don't want any. What's up? I don't want any. So, on, you right? I'm going upstairs. What do you have to offer my daughter, Harry? I mean, I hardly know you. Do you come from a good family? I mean, uh, do you have any money? Is your legal firm top rank or what? Uh, Harry doesn't do corporate law, actually. I asked him, Katie, not you. Well, I'd say that your family is almost as crazy as mine. Ah. Money, I have enough. Prestigious law firm, definitely. Good, good, good. So, uh, Harry, why are you so special, then? Because she said yes. Ah. I would like your blessing, Dominic. But if you have any objection, please speak now. Oh, why bother? Caitlin hasn't cared about what I've said for years, have you, Katie? Well, we both do care what you have to say. Oh, thank you. Good. Good. Well, then, uh, I have no objection, Counselor. Come on, let's celebrate, huh? Come on, celebrate. Here we go. Kate. Kate, come here. Come here. I have to talk to you. If you tell anyone that I told you this, I will deny it. I could lose my license for telling you. What, what are you talking about? You remember Harry came for his physical. The lab report on his blood workup indicated excessive white cells, so we sent a sample to an independent lab for verification. And we're not going to know anything until we get the second labs. And Harry doesn't know anything yet. Harry doesn't know what? I'm sorry, but it looks like Harry has leukemia. Should we even have a band? Is it too much? Maybe just a guitar. Or a harp. Love harps. If you can still find a harp. Dominic called. He wants trumpets and lots of them. He wants you all in white, the bridesmaids in pink, and a troop of ring bearers on Valentine's Day. Yeah, why didn't he call me? Well, he was afraid you wouldn't go for the trumpets. Yeah. Do you... Do you really want a big wedding? If you do. Well, it sounds kind of awful. Dad yelling at everybody and... Oh, I get the picture. We could just, uh, you know, get married. No ring bearers. <laughs> no anything, just uh, us. And we wouldn't have to wait till Valentine's Day. We wouldn't have to wait at all. I'd like that. 
Enough to do it? Uh, this is not all about annoying Dominic, is it? No, not at all. It's just if if we want to and and I want to, why wait? Go get married. Yeah. Harry, you take this woman to be your wedded wife? I do. And Caitlin, you take this man to be your wedded husband? I do. Then by the power vested in me, by the great Commonwealth of Virginia, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride, sir. And... I, uh, I hope you're not too disappointed. No mm. big wedding and all. No, well, Kate and I preferred it that way. Uh, give me that brace and bit, will you? Ah, uh, Caitlin's a grown woman. She can do what she wants. A lot like her mother. Uh, the uh, brace thing you were talking about? Yeah, that thing with the handle there. The brown thing. Oh. Near the wire. I don't know a screwdriver from a socket wrench. Don't worry. You don't need to be handy with Caitlin around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Get up from underneath. You are something, Kate. Don't you pay attention to what anybody says to you? Couldn't you at least have waited until we knew for sure? That would be, that would be such a mistake. He could live for years and years and years and, and be fine. Live for years, yes. Be fine, I'm not so sure. Have you thought at all about what your life is going to be like with him? Yes, just right here. Hang on. Cynthia. Oh, oh. Hello. Mrs. Harry Dietrich. I am so happy for you. You're the only one so far who's actually said that. What did Dad say? Not much. I already got Harry up on a ladder. They seem to be hitting it off. He likes Harry because he stands up to him. I stand up to him. He doesn't like me. You're his daughter. Oh, hey, listen, Simon is going to come to the opening, so we'll get some free press. Oh, great. Fame at last. Cynthia. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. She wasn't sure. She told you before we got married, did she? She didn't know for sure. And I thought that if you knew or or even suspected that you'd make an informed decision about my future. About our future. I didn't think I was up to that. I thought you wouldn't want to marry me. No. I promised you a life I... I may not have to give you.
I love you, sick or not. This morning we were shopping for a laundry hamper because Harry leaves his dirty socks all over the floor and now this is so unreal. When we were first married, Jerry thought I was going to bring him breakfast in bed every morning. That was unreal. I meant the chemo. I know. You know, chemo is really rough and it gets worse as the treatments go on. You have to be prepared for that. Still having your store opening. Oh, yeah. Are you gonna go? Sure. This dress is beautiful. I love it. I can keep those to the side while you keep looking. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Kate, oh, everything's marked. Everything's fine. You're up and going. Okay. No! No, 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 no. Okay. You know me in parties. I'll talk to you later. Good Bye. luck. Hello, Hi. how are great. you? Hello, Angel. Hey, it looks great. Thank hey, you. Paul. Thanks. Hey. Hi. Oh, how are you? It looks great. Thank you. Thanks for coming. She really appreciates it. Family solidarity. That's right. How are you feeling? Great. Ask me again next week. Simon's here. Hey, I'm missing. What's going on? Haven't you ever heard of Covington Heights? That silly soap opera? <laughs> I don't have time. <gasps> it's Pierce! Kate. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. The place looks great. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sweetheart. What's your name? You named it for me. Yes, I did. <laughs> I might have to open a New York branch. <laughs> so, Harry, how are you feeling? I'm sorry, you must be tired of hearing that. No, not at all. It's it's the brave smile I wear that gets a little exhausting. Cheers, cheers. And this must be Harry. How are you? <laughs> nice to meet you, Simon. Nice to meet you. Kate, my publicist wants a word with you if you have a moment. Something about the post. The newspaper? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your 15 minutes of fame coming right up. Wow. Simon, look at these hats. Aren't they beautiful? Kate's friend makes them. I want all of our bridesmaids to wear Arabella's. Want to be brilliant? Who's Arabella? <laughs> if Simon's IQ was higher than the speed limit, he'd never survive Cynthia. <laughs> Can't be easy living with a goddess. Tell me about it. Since I was 13, she's made me feel ordinary. There is nothing ordinary about you. Oh. You're a lot to live up to, Doctor. Hey, everybody, downstairs. Group picture. Oh, boy. Okay, hurry up and take the picture. It's really cool. All right. Smile. <laughs> oh, Harry. Yeah? Harry, here it is. Sister of top model Cynthia D'Angelo. Caitlin Dietrich shows fashion flair more attuned to Manhattan than Cleveland Park. This tiny shop is a retro gem. It's vintage clothing, romantic and glamorous, perfect for the 21st century. Congratulations. You're a hit. You want to see? Yeah. Hmm. Are you going to be sick again? Absolutely. Probably not in the next uh, two, three minutes. It'll be OK. We'll get through this. Aren't you going into the shop today? No. I thought I'd stay home with you.
I hate you seeing me sick like this. But this is how you are. This is, this is what we've got. True. And soon I'll be begging you to stay home with me. But no, come on, go. Take that with you. How's it going? Come on in. Oh, thanks. Is this time good for you? Sure, sure. I thought maybe we could uh, play a little chess. Hmm? You play chess, don't you? Yeah, a little. Can I get you something? No, no, I'm fine. Thanks. Ah, come on. I got 52 varieties of herbal tea. You sure? <laughs> no, thanks. Look, I'm okay. I don't blame you. What do you want to do? Right here? Is this all right? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Check and mate. <laughs> Where'd you learn to do that? Service. You were in the service? Yeah, just after college, before law school. Oh. All right. It's one serviceman to another. Have a look at this. Wow. Which one are you? Me at the end there. Where was this? Korea, 51. I still got a hunk of shrapnel on my shoulder to remind me. Purple Heart? Yeah. And a Navy Cross. Wow. What happened? Well, we were patrolling offshore to pick up some pilot that got shot down. And me and my best buddy, Kenny, this guy here, we were working the forward turret. We got a direct hit just below the gun mount. and. Uh, in a couple of seconds, it was like the whole world was on fire. I knew the magazine was going to go because we had powder bags all over. So I managed to get hold of the hose, and I'm hosing everything down. And finally, I see Kenny on the deck. He was burnt. Oh, he was burnt bad. So I uh, finally got him out and carried him topside. It was over. They said we saved the ship, so they gave me a medal. Kenny got one, too. But uh, his was posthumous. I'm sorry. That's the way it goes. Why don't you, why don't you stretch out, lay down, be comfortable? No, I don't mind if I do. Good. Come on, I'll give you a hand. Yeah, let's put this over you. Yeah, thanks. All right, thanks. You don't have to tuck me in. It's all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a it's old habit. Okay. Hi. What are you doing here? Well, someone should be with him. You weren't. You have my wife. I'm pregnant. Is this too much? Can you handle it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have a baby. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> we can't talk yet. <sighs> Gotta start something. <sighs> 
Congratulations, Mom. Me too. Very hard on this. Everything is guaranteed nutritious. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, no, you'll like it. It's good. You'll see. Okay. This is the tofu turkey. Tofu turkey. Well, it's not really turkey. Oh, I was hoping it wasn't really tofu. <laughs> and this is yogurt and flax seed. It's a great source of omega-3s, and you can put flax on anything. Cereal, seaweed. The wall. <laughs> you know, I prefer my seaweed with a little bit of mustard and relish. Here, you'll get used to it. It's really good. And good for you. So, any questions? How about we order Chinese? <laughs> well, I guess I'm not dying after all. Well, not right away, anyway. <laughs> Got a long way to go yet. What do you mean? Well, technically, your husband's in remission. But it can reoccur at any time. However, the effects of the chemo, the weight loss, and nausea should ease off in a few days. OK, Harry? It's OK with me. <laughs> we'll see you in two weeks. All right. Thank you, Oh, yes. Well, congratulations. Thanks. And how's Harry? I understand that you... you... He's great. He's good. Look, honestly, if there's anything, anything I can do, yeah. don't hesitate. May I introduce Carol, my Hi. fiance? Oh, oh. Uh, nice to meet you. Congratulations. That I, I think that's great. God, so good to see you. You too. You look, um, so... Enormous? No, 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 no. You look wonderful. Content. It's a good look. Well, we better run. Me too. It was nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Congratulations. See you. So? She's great. <laughs> Listen, we got a 7 o'clock tea time tomorrow. We're still looking for a fourth. Oh, I wish I could be there. Where are you playing? Rock Creek. Oh, thanks, Francesca. I mean, how are you feeling, anyway? Oh, pretty good. Yeah, because uh, I hear your last test results were really great. Yeah, they were. I just got them back this morning. How'd you find out? From the Family News Network over there? It wasn't me. Kate told us. Harry, you look good, but I wish you'd put on some weight. Yeah, you might want to start doing a little walking every day, if you like. For heaven's sakes, leave the man alone. Bunch of interfering women. I love the interference. And so do you, especially when they interfere with a good meal. Well, cooking is one thing, but they don't have to run our lives. No, cooking's, cooking's fine. And as Franny can be a doctor as long as she sets the table and does the dishes and... She wouldn't be a doctor if it wasn't for me. I wanted to go on to be a surgeon. It's never enough, is it? You're criticizing me for helping your sister make something of herself? Come on, it's the 4th of July. We're all here together. Let's just be happy. Harry, let's go. You're not walking out on another family dinner, are you, Kate? Oh, honey, come on. Where are you going? Take, 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 take my purse. I'm going to the hospital so I can have the baby. Really? Yes, really. really? I dare you to tell me I look beautiful. You do. You're beautiful. And so is this tiny little boy. Didn't feel so tiny to me. No. <laughs> what do you think? I think he's perfect. Still a little red and wrinkly. 
but tough. Great it was to be home oh, and alone oh. again. Dinner is in the oven on low, the table is set, and the crib is all made up. And we are out of here. Oh, oh, just a sec. He looks just like that Cupid in the store. Come on, I can admire the baby later. Oh, that's better, huh? Bye. <sighs> Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. No, I think you could use a few more sisters. <laughs> Anyone else I can expect today? Nope. Just me. Me and the little guy. It's good to be home. I can hear you blinking. Oh, I think our sleeping days are over. What am I in here thinking about, Patrick? What may become of him? He's gonna be just like you. That's what I'm afraid of. Pretty soon he'll be driving. And we'll be lying awake, waiting for him to come home. Then you can go out and get him. I will, too. I know you will. Aren't you a little worried? Right now, I'm just happy to look at him. Think we're up to this? Oh, yeah. Time. You learned how to walk, pal. Good morning. Okay. Hi. Come here, come here, come here. Good news. What? Profit, profit, profit. Four months in a row. Even the hats are selling. No. This is a definite trend ah, here. Did you hear that? Looks like you're going to be able to go to college after all. <laughs> uh, I feel like I've been awake since the day he was born. Oh, darling, let me hold him, please. Yeah. I'd love to. Yes. Come on, Papa. Oh, okay. look at that. Cynthia's. Yes? What? Where? Oh. Stay with him. I'll be back. He's doing fine. Tell me the truth. His immune system is suppressed. He appears to be clinically stable, but we'll watch him for a few days. I wish I had a stronger idea that you people knew what you were doing. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. I feel the same way. Sometimes I think we've beaten this thing. Other times, it seems like it's laughing at us. We don't know at all. 
go home and get some sleep. I'll kill an Harry later tonight. I'll call if there's any change. Seven pounds, 11 ounces. Oh, you're getting so big. Are you getting any sleep? I nap at the hospital. Oh. Yes, sugar. I can give you a sedative. No, I'm all right. Mm, Francesca, thanks for not saying I told you so. I'm sorry, I can't make everything better for you. You're very brave, Katie. Kate. Hi. I have something for the baby. I was in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd drop on up. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's really sweet. Hmm? Yeah, it's cute, but he's he's asleep. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll just put it down here. Okay. So, uh, how's Harry doing? He's good. He's holding his own. Whatever that means. Good. Good. Now, can I see the baby? Well, I, um, he was up all night, so I'd like to let him sleep. I'm not surprised he's up all night if he sleeps all day, Kate. You don't have to go to him every time he cries. Let him cry. He'll get the message. Now, can I see the baby? Uh, Dad, I just, I just put him down. I don't want to wake him up. I didn't ask you to wake him up. I just want to look at him. I want to see what he looks like. Let me look at him. Why do you have to think of everything in terms of how it affects you? He's asleep. You, uh, Come back later or not. I don't really care, but you can't see him now. Please go. I know what you're afraid of, kid. You're afraid that Harry will die and you don't want to live without him. That's how I felt about your mother. But you're going to live, Kate. Your life won't be the same, but you'll live. How are you holding up? Me? Hmm. Oh, well, Patrick is finally sleeping through the night. Great. And, 
I told my father to get lost, which apparently he has. Why'd you tell him to do that? He just, he dropped by one too many times. He showed up, I'd been up all night with the baby, and he wanted me to wake him up. Oh, he's lonely. Yeah, with good reason. His wife is dead. His daughters have left. And they're pretty good lies, with no small thanks to him. Are you kidding? He's done nothing but single me out from day one. Tried to crush me like he did my mother. I just, right now, I just want him out of my life. There is so much more to him than you can see. And there's so much more to you than he can see. But our son deserves a grandfather. Especially one that wants to be around. But if you die? If I live, I want him to know Dominic. She's still asleep. What? She's still asleep. Yeah. I'm sorry if I wasn't very patient. This thing with your dad is hurting you. It's not good. For you. For any of us. <sighs> it's been going on so long, I can't... I can't even remember when it started. We'll find a way to end it. You can do it. Thank you, Father. I'm so glad you could do it. Thank you, Father. It was a beautiful Christmas. Say thank you, Patrick. Hey, say thank you, Father. There you go. There you go. You were great, pal. You were great. Good job, buddy. Thank you, Father. Good job. Thank you, Father. It's a beautiful service. Aunt Franny. Uncle Jerry. I see Caitlin's keeping up your flowers. Well, Grace, they're all here. Even the actor. I think I'm gonna have to get a larger dining room table. Oh, Gracie. Gracie, I miss you so much. Just like you always said I would. Hi. Oh, hi. This is as good a place as any. Better than most. Well, I owe you an apology, not just for what I said last week. I was wrong. Dropping by without calling first. No, Dad, would you just let me say it? <sighs>
He was probably so stunned to hear the word apologize come out of Kate's mouth, he didn't know what to do with himself. Grace, Maya, go and wash up. Reading in five minutes. We don't know what to do either. What are you talking about? Well, we don't. Cynthia, you just spoil him. And Francesca is too busy. I have always thought it was Kate's issue and it didn't affect me, but let's face it, it affects all of us. Is anybody talking to anybody? I tried that, didn't work. Caitlin, what went on between me and your mother had nothing to do with you. But fine. At your age, I should think you would understand that. I understand everything. I saw the way you treated her. I thought you hated her. I used to dream about running away with her so she could have some peace. Don't tell me how I felt about my wife! You thought I didn't love your mother? How could you think that? Because you yelled at her like you're yelling at me. I'm sorry, maybe I didn't understand. I, I, I was trying to say I was sorry. Well, better late than never, I guess. That's not good enough. Whether you accept her apology or you don't. Mind your own business, Francesca. This is my business, damn it. Don't curse at this table! <laughs> you know what? Your yelling doesn't intimidate me. You know what it does? It gives me a headache. From now on, if you have anything to say to me, anything at all, you will say it in a respectful manner, like a human being. Are you finished? No, we're not. Well, at any rate, I'm not. You can't even accept Kate's apology without sticking in your two cents worth of anger and bitterness. Well, it's not right. And I'm not gonna sit here and let it go by. Honey. No, I'm tired of smiling and pretending everything's okay. It's not okay. You have no right to say that to me. I don't see any of you raising four kids and building a business at the same time with a sick wife in bed. She wasn't sick. She was drunk. Don't you criticize your mother at this table. And not a one of you can even come this close to her. Oh, I thank God she's not here to listen to what you have to say. You can't just walk away from me again. I can, if you're going to attack her. Why would I attack her? I lost her too. She was my mother. I'd find her out here sometimes. Curled up on this bench, sleeping it off. I tried everything I could to get her to stop, but Nothing worked. I couldn't save her. Finally, all I could do was yell, and it only made things worse. For you and everybody, I'm sorry.
With her gone, I feel like I've lost something of myself. Me too. Well, at least we have one thing in common. grandson. Katie, we'll get through it. 